Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be talking about the Apidura Expedition Full Frame Pack. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO114. So, a full frame bag. Uh, this is a biking bag that fits inside the triangle of your bike. Um, as a full frame bag, it uh, fills up the entire triangle as opposed to like a half frame bag, which would be um, filling up like the top half of your triangle, uh, but leaving enough space for like some water bottle cages below it. Um, but the, the full frame bag uh, doesn't leave any space for anything else inside the triangle with it. Um, so that is definitely a consideration to make when, when choosing like what category of, uh, of product to be looking for here. The Expedition full frame pack comes in uh, four different sizes. They've got a 6 liter, 7.5 liter, 12 liter, and 14 liter size. Um, Though in this case, uh, you you won't really be choosing the size based on like what your cargo capacity preference is. Uh, you'll be choosing based on how big the triangle of your bike is, right? Because you you know you want something that's going to be the right shape and size uh, for for the the triangle of your bike. Uh, now that that being said, one of the reasons that I bought the bike that I have, the Marin Four Corners, um, one of the one of the things that attracted me to that bike is the fact that it has a massive triangle, um, and so naturally, of course, I uh, got the 14 liter size of this bag. Um, and actually, like I mean, as I was shopping around for like full frame bags, um, I was like looking at options from several different companies, and the reason that I was uh, that I chose the Apidura over other uh, options was because 14 liters was the largest size uh, of, of any of the frame bags that I could see uh, available. Uh, now, their website does have a pretty good sizing guide. Um, so, like, they have a drop down menu where you can choose the make and model of your bike, and they've got a lot of different models listed. Um, and, uh, and then it will just tell you, like, okay, based, like, Based on your bike and what size your bike is, uh, this is what size of this bag we would recommend you get. Um, So that's that's nice and handy. Um, I think they also have like a a PDF uh, file that you can print off that will kind of show you the outline of like the size of the bag. So you can print those off and kind of cut that out and then, you know, stick it inside your bike's triangle to compare and see like oh is that is that the correct size for my bike all right so what kinds of pockets and openings are we working with here for this bag um so first of all uh we've got the the big main compartment um there are two zippers on the right side of the bag that access this main compartment um And the reason there are two zippers is because uh, the main compartment can be divided into an upper compartment and a lower compartment. Um, The bag comes with a little divider that's like Velcroed in. Um, So if you you have the divider in, uh, then the upper compartment is typically where you would put like a water bladder or something like that. Um, And then there's a small opening at the front of the bag for the hose from that bladder to poke out. Um, And that's how I've been using this bag when I've been out on uh, tours or long races or whatever, right, is uh, is I've got a big three liter um, water bladder that I stick in the upper compartment of this bag. And actually the, the bag is large enough that I could probably have, you know, like a, a four liter uh, or, or larger um, water bladder. I had a little bit of extra space back behind the water bladder um, where I would just kind of stash a couple more items uh, next to it. There's also uh, on the inside wall of this main compartment, there's like there's another zipper with this tiny, tiny little um, uh, pocket for just like small wallet sized things. So that is, you know, literally where I put my money clip um, so that I mean, it's it's nice and it it is security through obscurity. But like, you know, I didn't feel um, uncomfortable with like leaving my wallet in that little pocket 
if I was leaving the bike for just a few minutes because I, you know, there's there's virtually no chance that somebody's going to be able to like look in there and find that little pocket and, you know, know that my wallet's in there and steal all my stuff. Now, uh, if you take out that divider that um, is secured with Velcro into that main compartment, then you've got a very, very large space to to play with, um, and it can accommodate very wide items um, as long as they're they're fairly flat, right? Because this is, I mean, this is a triangular bag that fits inside the triangle of your bike. So like you can't have super bulky items, um, but anything that'll fit in into the triangle of your bike should fit into the main compartment of this bag. So um, I was really pleasantly surprised when I figured out that my school laptop, which is a MacBook Air, um, I think it's a 13 inch MacBook Air, um, fits inside this, this frame bag. Um, now, of course I, I put the laptop into a kind of padded laptop sleeve before I stick it into the bag itself because I don't want the sharp corners of, of the laptop like poking into the insides of the bag. Um, but yeah, it, it like given that I spent pretty much this entire spring uh, riding around without any cargo racks, you know, so I didn't have any panniers on my bike. Um, being able to transport, you know, the laptop that I needed uh, with me for work uh, when I started commuting again, that was that was a very, very useful thing for me. Uh, there's one more pocket to talk about. Um, on the left side of the bag, there's another zipper um, for a slimmer pocket where you can put like small items for easy access. Um, so this is, I, I would put stuff like granola bars, my chapstick, um, a pen, you know, a mask, my keys over the, on that side. Um, so anything that I might need to have access to during a ride um, or like right when I get somewhere, you know, I would need like my keys so that I can uh, lock up the bike with my bike lock. Um, so, you know, because, because that slim pocket isn't very deep, like that was kind of the perfect place to put those types of items, especially since I don't, you know, I don't have like a, a top tube bag uh, on my bike. So that kind of fit into the same conceptual uh, space, you know, the, the same kinds of items that you might put into a top tube bag uh, went into that slim side pocket on, on the frame bag. Now, I did have some trouble with this bag um, in regards to always trying to overstuff it. Um, and I think part of this comes down to the fact that, like, I'm not really used to having, like, a flat bag. Um, you know, I'm more used to my big, giant Ortlieb panniers that are just, like, one cavernous opening, uh, you know, and an entire, like, 20-liter um space to fill up uh so yeah like with with this frame bag i you know i always felt like i was putting like a reasonable amount of stuff in i never really like when 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 i was putting stuff into it it never felt like it was like too much for the space inside the bag to be able to handle um, but then like quite often when i would go to zip up the zipper um i would you know like I would have some trouble getting the the two sides of the zipper to be able to like meet each other, um, and uh, and I did learn that like you know loosening the straps uh, that were near the zippers would would help a lot uh, in in terms of allowing um, those those sides of the zippers to to meet each other, but. Uh, I think that the reason that they were able to meet each other was because, like, by loosening the straps, I was kind of allowing the bag to kind of bulge out a little bit more, you know, to the sides, um, instead of being stretched as taut as possible, you know, in, like, the forward and backward direction um, and the up and down direction. Um, so kind of changing changing the shape of the bag a little bit um, from this kind of flat long bag to a more like wider um kind of less not not quite as long <laughs> um and yeah I did have like once or twice where you know I, I would like pull the zipper slider a little bit too hard and like the 
the zipper would kind of separate there and you know you have to unzip it to the point where where the sides of the teeth of the zipper were no longer um you know connecting with each other and then you know start over again uh, a little bit more carefully but yeah um, there isn't really, you know, I, I like to, when I'm, when I'm packing up stuff on my bags, um, I often end up getting like creative with the packing, um, you know, so stuffing as much stuff inside the bag as possible, but then also like strapping stuff to the outside, um, you know, attaching them in different ways. That's not really possible with this bag. Like what you can put inside, you can put in and what you can't, it's just not an option, right? Um, the only the only time that I've come close to like having a creative uh, packing solution for this is just like once or twice when I had items you know like like a clipboard or whatever that uh, that I needed to slide in and out all the time um, I would just leave the, like the zipper and the in the top of the bag open uh, and just kind of slide the clipboard in and even if it didn't go all the way into the bag like that was fine because I was going to pull it out again in just a minute. Um, but yeah, uh, for the most part, you know, you stick what you can into this bag and anything that can't go into the bag, you're going to have to find a different bag uh, to, to put it in. All right, waterproof. Um, this, this bag, they claim that it's, uh, you know, 100% waterproof, but um, like after the last rainstorm that I rode through a few days ago, there was uh, a lot of standing water in the bottom of the bag. Um, and I'm not sure what ingress point that came from, but um, I have a few thoughts. There are some possibilities. Um, number one, uh, I did have you know a, a water bladder in there with a hose poking out. Um, so that that hole that the hose pokes out of, it's a it's a small hole, and it's you know partially covered by uh, kind of a Velcro strap. But it is impossible to like 100% seal up. Uh, a hole like that. Um, also, the adhesive around one of the zippers, around the bottom zipper, is not really completely secured anymore, and, and I'm going to talk more about that uh, in depth in the durability section. So stand by, you know, hold that thought for later. Um, but then also, I mean, like the zippers themselves, right? Zippers aren't 100% waterproof. Um, the, the top two zippers have flaps that kind of cover them um, but then the, the bottom zipper does not so um, I think there's more of a possibility of water getting in that bottom zipper than uh, than I would like compatibility so um, this bag attaches to your frame uh, via they've got eight straps, um, three Velcro straps along the top side, uh, and then they have, um, you know, webbing straps with, uh, with buckles. Um, well, not, not buckles that can like clip and unclip, but you know, just like, um, that you, that you can pull tight and it holds it there. Um, they've got two of those on the back side of the bag and then, uh, three of them along the, the down tube side of the bag. Um, and those, you know, um, they, they, they hold it pretty securely. Um, the closer, the closer your bag is to the size of the triangle, the better time you'll have of like really securing it. Um, I, I have had to kind of make some executive decisions about like okay which side of this bag is going to be kind of flush with which tubes of my bike um, because it isn't it isn't 100 percent the correct dimensions for the triangle in my bike um, and so what i've opted for is to kind of keep the the down tube side um you know secured like snugly against uh, against the down tube but then that means that it's um the bag starts off uh you know at the back uh at the back top corner 
it is nice and snug with the the top tube but then as you go forward it gets you know the the bag angles down more than than the top tube does of my bike um so the the straps on the front are uh a, you know looser than the straps on the back um and so it kind of it does swing around just just a little bit just a fraction of an inch um and i can see that you know i can see it doing that while i'm riding um but uh it's you know it's not it's not the end of the world um and i haven't noticed like it's not enough to, for me to really notice like weight shifting around um because you know i mean like one of the big advantages of of having a frame bag like this is that like you can put a lot of heavy items in it and they'll all be you know like lower center of gravity um centered on the middle of the bike as well uh and also like because it's secured directly to the frame instead of like to a cargo rack that might flex a little bit right it's not going to move around as much um so like i i haven't noticed any weight shifting inside this bag being like a problem for 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 handling or anything like that and yeah like it's um it's it's basically impossible for a bag manufacturer to you know unless they are like making unless they're taking custom orders where you send them the measurements of the triangle of your bike um, or if they are like partnering directly with a bicycle manufacturer to you know come out with like a a dual branded um uh frame bag for a particular model of bike like there's no way that that one of these frame bags is going to be perfectly sized to the bike that you have um so there's always there's probably always going to be uh you know a little bit of give uh in that regard and yeah this uh the expedition um full frame bag is pretty clearly meant for like touring bikes um they have a separate uh line of of full frame bags um called i think it's the the backcountry line that's more uh oriented towards like mountain bike uh type ge geometry um so those uh those come in much smaller sizes because the triangles on on mountain bikes are way 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 smaller so um yeah i'm i am strongly thinking about uh looking into like custom made options uh instead of instead of you know just going with a kind of one size fits all bag oh durability so yeah despite the uh the name of the company ending in dura this is definitely the bag's weakest point um and frankly i'm like very disappointed in it um so i've i've only had mine for a few months i got it late last fall um and only used it for like a matter of weeks before you know that before putting that bike away for the winter season um and then uh you know used it for a couple of months here in the spring before i started having trouble with it um so the initial thing that I noticed uh, with this with this bag on the durability front is that um, the the bottom zipper uh, started separating from the rest of the bag fabric, and um, this is because like they only used an adhesive to attach the zipper uh, to the bag instead of like stitching it. Um, and I mean, it's pretty clear like why they did that because like if you if you use stitching then you're going to have to do put it through more of a process to like waterproof that stitching right so if you want to have a bag that is both durable and waterproof it's going to cost like way 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 more um but that's really you know that's what i want because it it like having a waterproof bag isn't doing me any good if the adhesives that hold that bag together start coming apart in just a few months and then I take it to a repair shop and they tell me well it's going to cost you a hundred dollars to repair this thing because we're going to have to stitch the whole the whole uh zipper area and then waterproof that and everything um and you know it's like well, I I'm not I'm not I can't afford to like pay a hundred dollars to repair a bag that was two hundred dollars in the first place so yeah um 
I did contact uh, Apodura and they offered to repair it, um, but I would have had to ship it to London, which would have taken a long time and that costs a lot of money. Um, so instead what I did was, uh, since I live here in St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, which is uh, right next to the 3M global headquarters, uh, I know a few people who work at 3M, so I asked them like, hey, do you know anything about adhesives? And um, yes, of course, you know, 3M, they do adhesives. They sure do. Um, so yeah, uh, shout out to Jenny for um, helping me, you know, giving me a few adhesive strips of, uh, of cool 3M stuff that um, allowed us to kind of re-secure that, um, that zipper opening. Um, and, and it, you know, it is... It's, it's holding up, um, but once again, I don't know exactly how waterproof the solution that we came up with is because, I mean, it's, uh, unless I like really tried to put this bag through like a submersion test and, and see which of the zippers uh, is, is leaking, um, it's hard to say like where, where the water came from last time that I went through a rainstorm. Uh, and then, I mean, so that's that's something that I discovered a couple months ago and uh, fixed up. Um, and then just the other day, uh, I discovered another piece of adhesive that is coming apart on this uh, on this bike. Um, so the the slim pocket over on the left hand side um, turns out the bottom of that pocket is just an adhesive strip, um, and below that is just kind of this this very tall empty space that is between like the outside layer of the bag and the inside liner that separates um the that slim pocket from the main compartment um and uh yeah i discovered this because um i thought that i had lost my multi-tool uh during the trans minnesota wheel race um, but then, uh, after the races, I was like unpacking the bag completely. Um, I, I felt this like strange, heavy lump inside this, the side of the bag and, uh, oh, Hey, look, there's the, there's the multi-tool. It had just like fallen through this new hole, um, in the, in the adhesive strip and, uh, had slid down into this, this space in between the two, um, in between the two layers of, of the bag. So, um, neat, I guess, like, I haven't decided how much I care about that because, I mean, if the rest of the adhesive separates, then that just means that I have a larger side pocket, um, but again, like the side pocket is supposed to be a very slim space. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to like put really bulky stuff in there. And I also don't want like all of my stuff to be sliding down uh, to the bottom of the bag because like the whole point is to be able to just slide some stuff in there that I'll need to grab at a moment's notice later on. So I do want, I don't want that pocket to be like a super deep pocket. Um, but either way, you know, it, it does um, speak to the fact that this bag is not constructed in a way that's going to last a long time. There's there's multiple, multiple points where the adhesives on this bag are just falling apart. I've also noticed that the bag has uh, rubbed off the paint from my bike frame uh, in some of like the corners, places where it rubs a little bit, um, which is concerning, um, though I, I don't know how much of that to attribute to the bag itself and how much to just, um, you know, I mean, maybe it's just that Marin didn't use very good paint uh, that uh, that rubs off more easily than I would like. Um, I don't I don't have other frame bags. Uh, to compare this to. All right, final thoughts on the Epidura Expedition full frame pack. Don't buy it. Um, yeah, it's it's not durable. It's not built uh, to last. I it's it's falling apart on me only a matter of months after I got it. Um, and uh, and frankly, I mean, it's just like it is. It's too difficult to get a frame bag that is going to really truly fit the triangle of your bike well. 
Um, I think I, I had bought this kind of hoping that I would be able to easily like swap it between my like winter bike and my summer bike. Um, but you know, those like, even if it, it mostly fits into both of them, it's kind of, you know, it's like a jack of all trades, master of none kind of situation. Not really, not really what I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, frame bag, I think is a category of, of bags that is worth like looking into custom built options. Um, so I, I know here in the Twin Cities, we have like Sturdy Bags um, is, is a well-regarded. Um, I'm, I, th- I think I'm going to want to do a little bit of research on like what kind of waterproofing methods uh, he uses for his bags and like what, you know, does he use adhesives versus stitching in like the weight-bearing uh, places um, before, you know, before I would pull the trigger on that kind of thing. Um, I have seen examples of some frame bags that use like roll close mechanisms instead of zippers, um, which intrigues me because that seems like it would be, um, a much more like waterproof and durable solution. Um, the only, the only example of that that I have seen so far is made by Ortlieb, of course. Um, and, uh, unfortunately, like frame bags um are it's not a product category that ortlieb has put a lot of attention into um and so they only offer these frame bags with roll close mechanisms in two different sizes and they're both very very small so um not something that, that's not really a viable option for me with my gigantic triangle um but i'm hoping i'm hoping that somebody picks up on that sees what ortlieb is doing and uh and makes a um you know starts offering um frame bags with roll close mechanisms uh in in more sizes um because that's i i think that that is in my ideal world i would want like a, a custom sized frame bag with a roll close top um that seems awesome Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any or all of it as you see fit, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO114. If you would like to discuss this episode with uh, other listeners, you can do so on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, uh, you can do so on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from from the the technological technological convergence. convergence. Technology is ever evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why every month on the Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.